Well, I, I love talking to professional coaches because it's just a different animal, right? Because if you look at like uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder and you say, who do fans pay to come see, Billy Donovan or Russell Westbrook, right? They're, they're buying tickets to see Russell Westbrook get triple doubles. And the organizations are invested 10 times more into their players than they are into their managers. What are the complexities just overall for managers in that scenario? Well, I mean, that's, that's how it should be. I mean, what these guys do, is, it amazes me, uh, just watching the talent of, of the players that we have. And, and, and I believe that my job is to figure out how to get these guys uh, to that next level, whatever it is. Um, you know, we've been fortunate, and, and I could see where there would be huge issues where you have these big contracts and, and the egos that come along with it. Um, but it, it's, it's different, and the fact, um, as I said when I took this job, uh, you know, when you have pillars in your clubhouse, um, like a Matt Holliday, like a, a, an Adam Wainwright and a Chris Carpenter and a Yadier Molina, um, you have those caliber of players already in that clubhouse, uh, they set the tone uh, for how things should look. The, those, those are the, the, the flag bearers for what the culture is. And when your best players are your hardest working players, when your best players are also some of the most selfless players, um, you, you are, are in a very special place. And that's what I walked into. And that's what I'm so grateful for what the organization, what Tony uh, and, and, and uh, the Cardinals as a whole already put in place and put into my lap. My, and my job was to... How do we not just continue this culture, but how can we continue to, to build it? And you have to have pieces like that in place. But as far as, as the, the, the dollar dynamic, it, it, you can't pretend that it isn't there. Uh, it's always looming, whether it's a, a free agent getting, you know, and I want him to get that big contract. I, I want to be able to put them in those spots. And we stay on top of different things that are going on. If a guy's in the middle of a streak, even though it probably doesn't look like he should be playing, you know, can we do something to help him out, to help him achieve? Uh, anywhere, any topic that, that our guys get to that next level, uh, we want to see it for them. Uh, and, and I think, you know, they, um, they appreciate the fact that we understand that human element to it. Okay, so I'm a, a professional basketball coach. I'm gonna hit you with two to three dilemmas, and I want you to tell me how you might help me deal with these situations, okay? Uh, I have a guy who signs a $40 million contract. He gets a second contract. How can I guard against human nature of him becoming complacent? I, I think you probably had to do your homework ahead of time if, if, if it's a guy that you think might become complacent, uh, you probably gave your money to the wrong guy. Um, for us, uh, that's something that we, we truly go through. Is, is this a guy that can handle the pressures that come with success? And can he handle the demands that come with a big contract? And most of the time, you aren't going to know. But there's some things that lead into whether or not you're walking right into a hornet's nest. Um, but for us, we, we don't treat anybody any different. And uh, when they walk in there, they're all given the same responsibilities of of, of what kind of attitude they bring to the field every day, uh, the way that they work, and, and the way that they compete. And with those things being said, I'm gonna revert also um, back to the fact that we have some other guys who've accomplished. Whatever kind of contract you're talking about, we've got some guys that are in that ballpark. Uh, they've done similar things, and they're going about their business the exact same way a guy who's making the minimum is. And when you have that in place, um, it's priceless. And so. Uh, to us, I think you're going to see, as I keep talking about leadership, uh, I think there's leadership, obviously, that comes out of the, the manager's office and the coach's office, and we can in continue to invest into some of our pillars. But these are topics that if we don't have some sort of uh, leadership inside that clubhouse that helps deal with these issues, you you're constantly going to be fighting an uphill battle. Okay, I'll give you one more. Uh, let's say I have a basketball coach walking into a situation I have a player who's on guaranteed contract, and he comes up to me and says, I'm not flying back to the next city with you. I'll just meet you there. And it's the organizational policy for him to fly back. And as a coach, if you sit him, you deplete his trade value, so you can't get anything. How do you manage that one, if you were giving me advice? Um, I love the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I just have trouble believing um, 
the people that we surround ourselves um, would put put us in that position. But you know, you are dealing with uh, a lot of times people getting bad advice, and that that could happen in, in any sport. My advice, um, and I always hope that I have the support from the front office, um, because I know that our club's going to deteriorate the moment we start we start uh, flexing on our non-negotiables. And some of the non-negotiables is that we're all going to be treated the same. And um, you know, that, that isn't exactly true. I love John Wood and how he talked about it. He goes, how can I treat you all the same? You're all so different. Uh, and there's truth to that. But when we start playing the special favors, uh, that's a, a spiral I think is going to just end in a, in a terrible crash. And so uh, what I would hope that I could give you uh, and what I would be able to do is to do the right thing. And the right thing is to make sure that that player's doing what the rest of the team's doing, and uh, regardless of the ramifications that come, because if we start to, to succumb to those, uh, we're not going to win. The competition level is so tight, right? I mean, you go from team to team, from the best team on paper to the worst team, and you go position by position, and skill level, the, the gap is so small. And if you don't pay attention to those tiny little details, like Coach Corbin was talking about, the, the neatness in the room, the little things do matter because you're trying to find that competitive edge that's going to allow you to outperform uh, people that are almost equally as talented. And so the reason I'm going down this road is those sort of issues, if they become big issues, you're just right in your death sentence because uh, it, it takes away uh, from every single person in that room, takes away from their value of what they bring to the product. Yeah, and I guess my question to you is if you have a, um, a younger player who isn't necessarily meeting the standards of the Cardinal way, what do you do as a manager to try and help him get above that line? Yeah, I, I, I err on the side of communication. Um, I, I believe in management by walking around. So every day uh, I take my fungo and I make the loop through the field and I hit the infielders and I talk to them and there's days I know their name's not in the lineup and it's going to be a short, awkward conversation. Um, there's other days where I know guys have certain things going on. There's, other, there's other days that I get blindsided by the fact, I think all of us believe that these guys have so much under control, but there, a lot of them are just kids and they're not immune to the trials of life. And um, when I make myself available, um, be, be careful for what you ask for, because you get to jump in and, and get your hands dirty, but it, it's also, there's, it, it's tough. I mean, watching some of these kids go through the things that they go through, but when you open up that door, um, there's also a great opportunity to, to help them grow. And when you have a young player, if you keep those doors open, um, some days uh, you, you're kind of wondering, what did I get myself into? But you're also realizing, too, that uh, you're, you're making an opportunity for change. And, you know, we see so many of these kids, uh, many of them from Latin America, that never had a male role model ever in their lives. No, no male ever put any kind of impact on them and, uh, in a positive way. And, and, and to be able to, to, to earn that over time um, and to have those conversations, I, I believe also that we have to make a lot of deposits to be able to make some withdrawals. So uh, I'm constantly trying to, to help these guys and, and, and develop that, that rapport. Um, and then when they need a kick in the butt, I know I'm going to give it to them and, and they're going to trust me. Um, but that's something that has to, it takes time. And uh, there's a lot of barriers that get in the way. But once again, um, what's the right thing? What's the right thing for this kid right now, regardless of how he responds, regardless of how it affects our club? If, if, we, if we can get down to that and uh, make that right decision, then, then I believe we can look ourselves in the mirror and realize we did our job the right way. And what's the biggest challenge of managing a roster that spans from 22 years old to 36 years old? Yeah, I think um, you know, a lot of the things we've already talked about. I mean, the original um, challenges with, with the guys that are just you know, barely getting out of college and some of them um, with barely a high school degree, been thrown a whole lot of money uh, and, and nobody, no, nobody that they're responsible to or have answered to or any kind of accountability. Um, you know, th that's a completely different set of unique circumstances compared to some of the guys uh, who've been around for a long time. And you know, th that's a unique situation also. I remember when I first got this job, uh, Tony told me one of the toughest things you'll ever deal with is handling a superstar on his way out. And I was thinking, you know what, that's a, that's a very uh, wise statement because it's part of their DNA to say, even if you tell me I can't do it, I can. Um, and, and you don't want to take that out of it. it, it it's tension all the time. So you're going to have unique struggles on both sides. Um, I love having the veteran players around. I love having that mix because their voice most often is going to even ring louder than mine inside that clubhouse. But also having kids in that early 20s age 
Um, I can't help but, but think of these, uh, just as, as Coach Corbin has said, um, they're, they're my kids. And we show up to New York, and I'm scared to death that my phone's going to ring. Um, I don't know what's going to come next, and I'm not necessarily worried about the five at home. It's the 25 we got on the road. And, uh, you know, those sort of things just prove the fact um, I want to care about them. I don't want to see them as commodities. I don't want to see them just as robots out there that are, that are putting up numbers. I want to invest into the people um, and then try to help them achieve the things that they want to achieve, obviously collectively, but also individually. Well, and can you just talk, lastly, about how as talent starts to decline, how if you have high character veterans, how that actually can prolong your career because what you can do inside the locker room? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's priceless. Um, you know, there's a, a title given a player we just signed with a Dexter Fowler. It's amazing. I talked to his previous managers, uh, talked to his, some coaches, some teammates, and they kept saying he's a pro, he's a pro, he's a pro. And to me, that's, that's a guy that just shows up to do his job. And a guy also um, that wants, wants to help other people, which is so counterintuitive, right? Not just to, to baseball, but our world that tells you, I'm going to get all that I can as long as I can so I can sit on my can. And they say that's success. Um, <laughs> And the, the world, you know, the billions of the dollars of marketing are pushed towards, you know, it's all about you. And then, and, and even some of the, the, the voices that are in their ears all the time, um, people close to them are telling them, it's got to be about you, don't worry about the team. And, and in the meanwhile, we're trying to build this other thing up that we understand uh, the value, not, not just for us as a, uh, as a coach to say I've won, but uh, when we all put, put it together and it goes right, how sweet that is. And to try and, and let them understand that if you can invest into other people, um, what this does, it, it, it does it, somehow it's going to come back to you. Secondly, it's going to create a winning environment. And, and thirdly, most importantly, as you talk about character, um, I, I think that's kind of the essence of character, is when we get outside of ourselves and we can invest with true motive into other people uh, without some sort of uh, idea of how I'm going to get anything back. And I've watched, I've watched so many good players take their game to another level in the eyes of their peers. When they're able to do that, they get outside of themselves and, and they'll, they'll all tell you to a man that it also goes hand in hand with championships. Um, the teams that figure out how to do that and, and it's people caring for people. Um, you know, Coach used a, a word earlier that's uh, I think one of the most messed up words in our English language which is love. You know, there's nothing wrong with that in our game and in life. And I think it's a deep mutual concern for other people. And if you have that capacity in you um, and you head into a space, I don't care if it's in your home, if it's in the workplace, or if it's in a locker room, and you can find mutual deep concern for somebody else's welfare um, and, and how to help them get better and, 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 and help them in their life, not just in their game. Um, you're going to be proud. You're going to be proud of the end product, what you do together as a team. But, but that legacy stuff, um, that is uh, it's just, it's priceless. You know, these guys are so fortunate, all of us in, in this game, the, the financial dynamics are mind boggling at times. Um, but you keep talking to these guys who've had great careers and great salaries, um, and, and they, all they want to talk about are, are the, the teammates that they had and the camaraderie they had and the people that invested into them and that they invested into. Um, that is taking character and putting it into motion and, and changing the world. Well, we're happy you're leading the charge here in St. Louis. We want to let's thank him for being so open and honest. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks a lot, Mike.